What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to give a quick overview of the Cineblur Bokeh Blur presets for Blender. This is a very simple node group that I've packaged into an add-on that will allow you to add a variety of different custom bokeh shape presets to your renders. And this all started off when I was making my own lens kernels to experiment with different results in my own renders. And I decided since I had a variety of them, why not just package these into a custom node setup and release it on the marketplace to see if anyone else finds it useful as well. So essentially it is a way that you can add a variety of different shapes to your bokeh within the compositor. And I've made it available here on Superhive Market and I'll go ahead and show you the simple installation process and how it works as well. So here we are inside of Blender here. I'll go ahead and install the add-on. So I'll go to edit preferences we want to make sure you have add-on selected here. We'll go to install from disk. You want to find where you have downloaded the add-on from Superhive Market. It will be in this zip file. So you don't want to unzip it. You just want to leave the file zipped and then we'll just install from disk and it should pop up here. And if it's not selected, you can select it, uh, but it should automatically do that for you. And I'll go ahead and close it here. And now to use the Cineblur node group, we'll go to the compositing tab click on use nodes. And for the sake of this example, I will delete both of these guys. We'll just add an input image and I'll just find an image that I've downloaded here off the internet. This will be good for an example. And then I'll also press shift A and we'll add an output viewer node and we'll connect this here. Okay, let's say we want to add some bokeh blur with some custom lens kernels to this image. So to find the node group, we'll just press shift A and you can see we have a add Cineblur node option here. We'll select that and then I'll just add this after our image. And already you can see we're getting some bokeh on our image and you can see we can increase this to say five. And now you can see we have some nice bokeh on some of the hot spots in our image. And you'll notice that we just have kind of this uh, three quarter moon effect. And that's because if you go to the Cineblur tab here on the right side, which is where you can select from a variety of lens kernels, we're using this circle six one right now, but let's say we want to change the shape of our bokeh a little bit. Uh, we can change this to perhaps oval two, might look pretty nice, let's take a look. So now you can see we're getting a different shape of bokeh here uh, when we apply our blur to it. You can see we have a variety of other options. We have some cool looking anamorphic ones where it kind of stretches the bokeh vertically, which is quite nice. And yeah, some of them are a little bit more organic and kind of add some imperfections to your imagery. You have some very basic shapes here as well, like a heart. I'll go ahead and just try one of our basic anamorphic ones. This is a little bit more of a clean anamorphic look. You can see it's just a white edge. So when it gets applied here, you'll see a white edge around the hot spots of our image. And I'll just be blurring our image in that fashion. And there you go. Now we have these kind of vertical shapes on our bokeh. And we'll try one more here just for the sake of this tutorial. You can try maybe this anamorphic one. Might be a little more interesting since there's some kind of organic uh, grunge on it. So let's take a look at this one. And now you can see that's a little bit more of a natural anamorphic look. And one of my other favorites is the triangle one effect here. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this. It's going to give us a triangle shape on our bokeh. And there you go. As you can see, we have some triangles on the hot spots of our image and it just gives our blur a little bit more of a unique organic look. And some other settings I have built into this node are obviously the blur amount controls how much blur we have. We have the bokeh rotation, which will rotate our bokeh shape. We have a radio blur setting, which is kind of interesting. I'll go ahead and try this here. We'll do a 15 degree radio blur really quick. And you can see it's just adding some radial distortion around our edges, kind of like some of those Helios lenses where you can just notice like a circular effect as kind of a vignette on some of the out of focus parts of those images. You'll notice here that because we're cheating that lens effect with a radial blur that we are getting some areas here that we're losing some detail from our original image. An easy solution to that is to just scale up this slightly, maybe 5% and all those edges will be resolved. But this radial blur effect can add a nice dreamy look to your images. And especially if you're adding a 240 widescreen letterbox, you can resolve these issues on the edges 
fairly quickly and utilize that effect. But essentially, this is it. We also have distortion and dispersion, which kind of just, for lack of a better term, just kind of messes up the original shape and gives it some chromatic aberration. So you can play around with these settings as well. But yeah, that's essentially what this node group can do for you. Obviously, we have over 30 shapes for you to choose from if you're interested in stylizing your renders in this way. Inside of Blender, you can obviously add custom lens kernels to a bokeh blur node as well. If you don't want to use our kernels here, I have a previous video on doing that. So check that out if you don't find what you're looking for here. And uh, yeah, I hope this video was helpful. And if you get this Cineblur add-on, I hope you find it useful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel, and I'll see you next time.